Thank you for in for participating in today's press conference. We will now begin with an opening statement from Coach Tad Boyle and then go to questions. When you're called upon for your question, please unmute yourself, state your name and affiliation first. Coach, please give us a brief opening statement and then we will go to questions. Well, first of all, you know, before we talk about this basketball game, you know, and I, I, I thought about this in the locker room before the game. Um, how the events that took place in Boulder, Colorado today, and, and I don't have any details other than to know that it was a tragic, tragic uh, situation. You know, it puts, it puts basketball uh, in its proper place. And uh, win or lose tonight, uh, I just I felt uh, an emptiness in my stomach, uh, uh, another senseless act of violence that we've, uh, we've experienced as a country uh, many, many times. And so uh, it puts this game in perspective. It certainly puts uh, losing in perspective. But even if we would have won this game and celebrated going to the Sweet 16, it would have it would have put a damper on it. So my heart goes out to uh, the families that were affected and those that were that lost their lives. Uh, again, I don't know any details. I don't know how many or what the situation was. Uh, we, we got an alert on our phones, uh, you know, about an hour or so before we came to the arena. Uh, I decided not to address it with our team because I wanted their, you know, but I know a lot of them saw it and uh, they didn't have details either. So anyway, uh, with that being said, uh, I'll take any questions about the basketball game. First question will go to Dan Wolken, USA Today Sports. Yeah, Ted, um, just to follow up on what you just said there, can you elaborate a little bit more on why you um, didn't want to talk about it with the team? Did anyone come about it? Well, I talked about it with a couple of my assistants, and we, we just felt like it was probably better left. You know, we, there was so – we didn't have any details. There, was, there wasn't anything really to talk about. I mean, I talked about it with them after the game, um, again, in the, in the perspective standpoint. But I – you know, your, your team's mental mindset as they prepare for a game, it, it's, it's sometimes fragile. And I didn't, uh, I didn't want to complicate uh, their minds too much because we had to go play the game. Uh, we weren't going to not play the game. So I decided to wait till after the game to, to address it with them, and, and, and I did. Next question goes to Michael Spencer. Um, Tad, what were those conversations like? I mean, obviously you guys are dealing with the loss of, of the game and the end of some college careers for guys and, and also I'm sure dealing with the emotions of not knowing what went on today back home. Yeah, it's again, there, there's, a, there's an emptiness in my stomach. I, I, I can't speak to our players and, and uh, you know, we'll find out more about what happened. We, I don't know if we'll ever know why it happened, but uh, – uh, it just again, it perspective is what it brings to to our players, and and uh, uh, because basketball is, is is just a part of our society, and uh, so, so sports are just a part, a small part of our society, and and as our players go through their lives, they're going to understand that. Now, right now in that locker room, maybe they don't have that perspective, and uh, you know we just lost a. Uh, uh, the season we had, which was such a special season with such special young men in that locker room, seven unbelievable seniors, uh, the most connected and one of the closest groups I've ever coached. We'll get through this and we'll get through it together. Uh, but right now, my heart goes out to the Boulder community and, uh, and more than just our basketball team. So the perspective that, that this will, will bring to their lives uh, – you know, it's something that we, we're going to have to talk about as we, as we process this and we move through it, you know, over the, the coming days. Next question goes to Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera. Yeah, Tad, uh, it, it seems a little silly to be asking about basketball right now, to be honest, but, you know, how much was, was Florida, Stink, Florida State's length uh, given uh, you guys fits, especially McKinley, uh, trying to get some space. Yeah, look, uh, you can simulate certain things when you prepare for Florida State. You cannot simulate their length. They're very long. They're very athletic. Uh, we knew they were going to pressure us. I did a bad job preparing our team for the pressure that was coming. And we've, we've, we've faced pressure before. We've, we've faced switching defenses before. 
we've handled it better before. We didn't handle it very well tonight. But, um, you know, we, I thought we got some open looks in the first half, and we got to the rim, you know, in the first half a couple times. We just couldn't finish. And we didn't take care of the you – know, you turned the ball over 19 times, Pat. Uh, you know, 11 was our number on the board. We had to have 11 or fewer turnovers to give ourselves a chance to win this game. And then you have to, you have to, you have to finish when you do get shots. And, and we didn't have a very good shooting night like we did the other night. And Florida State had a lot to do with that. You know, they're they're a good team. Uh, they lead, led the S or the ACC, excuse me, in uh, in scoring, and they also led it in field goal percentage defense. So uh, they're a they're a good basketball team. And I, I didn't do a very good job tonight as a coach. This loss is on me. I, I don't I don't blame our players. Uh, one bit. Their, their coach didn't do a very good job tonight. Next question goes to Jake Shapiro. Tad, just looking at what was happening on the floor, uh, you guys were close at halftime despite a pretty rough yeah. offensive yeah. half. Uh, what was the message at halftime? And, and, and even going into that second half, Keyshawn gave you some great minutes, got it back down to one, but then it just kind of unraveled. Yeah, you know, getting Evan and, and McKinley, your, you know, two of your best players in foul trouble, really hurt us. We went to the zone to try to slow them up, and we didn't we didn't execute that as well as we're capable. And and um, uh, but yeah, I thought you know, the message at halftime was, guys, we've turned it over eleven times, we're shooting thirty some percent, and we're definitely down four. Like we're right here, and you know, we cut it to one and. Um, you know, I thought McKinley got a got fouled on the drive, and I got a technical foul, and and uh, you know, uh, which really really is frustrating. But you know, I haven't haven't gotten one of those all year. But you you feel like you got to stand up for your guys when uh, you know, because coming into this game, Florida State fouled a lot more than we fouled. I mean, traditionally, uh, when you look at the, the the bulk of their season, the bulk of our season, and we you know we get the foul line eleven times, and they get twenty one times, and some of those were late, but. Um, uh, we we didn't uh, we we weren't good enough offensively tonight, and in, in the second half we weren't good enough defensively. In the first half, you know, we held again we held them 24 points. We'll take that all all day long. But second half our defense wasn't good enough, and um, and our frustrations got to us a little bit. Uh, we 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 played frustrated uh, for much of the night and sped up much of the night. Next question goes to Mark Kisla. Hey, Coach. Um, you and McKinley have been through a whole lot the last four years. And when he comes off the floor with a little over a minute left, uh, that was a pretty cool hug you, the two of you had. Did you say anything, or did you just want to let him know how much you appreciated him without words? Mark, I told him I loved him, because I do. That kid's special. What he's been through to get to the University of Colorado and what he's given this program over the last four years is the player's supposed to be crying, not the coach. <laughs> but there were tears in my eyes like there are now. And, and uh, he's a special, special young man. And, 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 and I'm telling you, all seven of our seniors are special, not just McKinley. But he's given so much to this program from the time he stepped on campus. And, and I really, really appreciate him. And he knows that. And I told him that. Next question goes to Kevin McCaskill, Jr. Kevin McCaskill, Jr., FP Sports out of Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, that leads right into my question. What, what could you be just a little bit more specific? Uh, what has McKinley Wright meant to your program over the course of his career? Well, number one, he's given it. He's given everything he's gotten. I mean, I could count on one hand, and I still have some fingers left, how many bad practices he's had. He's an everyday guy that competes hard. He's prepared himself in the off season. He has gotten his teammates better. So McKinley's not just made his, his own game better from his freshman year to his senior year and improved every single year, but he's made his teammates better. He's challenged his teammates. He's encouraged his teammates. And I always say, you know, the biggest compliment you can give your best player is if he's a great teammate. And you can say that about McKinley Wright. He's helped us in recruiting. You know, he's hosted a lot of guys on visits. He's, uh, uh, he's just done so much. Uh, and, you know, at our basketball camp in the summer, uh, interacting with young 
uh, people in our community and kids that come to our camp and, and uh, look up to them. You know, there's a lot of kids that think you have to be tall to play basketball. And, you know, McKinley's a six foot guard and he's got the heart of a lion. So uh, I could sit here and talk for two hours about what he's done. But those are some of the things he's done for our program. And, and uh, uh, it means a lot. And he's going to be sorely, sorely missed. Next question goes to Justin Michael Guerrero. Ted, what example has this senior class set for your program, especially the young guys who get to start at an NCAA tournament as opposed to finish like the 2017 class has? And when you look at this 2020 class, you've got another really good one in 2021 coming in. Uh, how bright is the future of your program at Colorado? I think it's very bright. It's extremely bright. The young players that are in this program and the guys that get – and I think the, 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 the example that those guys set is they got better every single year. And they, you know, they took some lumps as freshmen and sophomores. But, you know, Deshaun Schwartz got better. He became a 1,000-point scorer in this tournament for us. You know, we're going to have 4,000-point scores in that class before it's all said and done because Evan was a piece of that class, but he redshirted his freshman year. So, you know, the example they set this year was a, was a very high bar and the leadership that they showed uh, through tough times. You know, this team lost back-to-back -back games one time all year. And, and it wasn't because we weren't ready to play, you know, Oregon after losing to Cal. We were. We just didn't make any shots that night, much like we didn't tonight. But uh, they've given us so much. And if our young guys can learn one thing, one thing from this, uh, uh, this class, it's uh, constant improvement and leadership because that's what it's going to take as this program moves forward. But it's in good shape. We've got good young players. And we'll, we'll add up a, a piece or two to the mix. We've got a good class coming in next year. And, and, uh, the, but the bar's been set pretty high. And, and, and we didn't get to the Sweet 16 this year. Um, but we're, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. And, and hopefully beyond. I mean, that's, that's something that I'm committed to as long as I'm the coach at Colorado. Final question goes to Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera. <laughs> Hey, Tad, kind of going back to the, the events in Boulder, you know, you said the, the guys got alerts. Do, do you feel like, you know, that's the place they probably shop at? But they've got friends back there. Do you think it was uh, weighing on them when they hit the floor? I, I don't think so, Pat. I really don't. I think our guy, we have a focused, focused group, and, and uh, you know, it may have uh, – yeah, and, and they look, they have to answer that. I, I do know, as I sat in the locker room before the game started, and I thought, win or lose, you know, this, this gives uh, the game of basketball perspective. It gives the NCAA tournament perspective. And I'm so thankful that we're playing this tournament. I'm so thankful that our players got a chance to play this year. This group got 32 games of basketball in. I mean, I'm so thankful for that because they love the game and they, they have sacrificed and committed themselves so hard. So, yeah, I, I knew that uh, when this game was over with, it was going to be all about perspective, win or lose, and we lost. And, and it's important that our players have perspective. I, I don't think it was weighing on their minds, but again, I could be totally wrong and off base on that. The, the one thing I'm not going to do is sit here and make any excuses for the way we played. I'm going to take responsibility for it. Um, and uh, again, my heart goes out to everybody that was affected uh, by the events in Boulder today. And, and, and you know, we're going we're gonna to work through this you know, as a community together, Boulder's a, uh, as safe a place as I've ever felt and lived in my life. And uh, so if it can happen, it can happen there, it can happen anywhere. And, and uh, but we, we got to figure out a way to stop this stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't know if the, I don't know if the answer, but we just got to figure out a way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time tonight, coach. Yep. We'll be joined momentarily by McKinley Wright. Please use this time to raise or lower your hand as necessary. We are now joined by McKinley Wright. We'll begin the press conference. Please use the raise your hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. And when you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation. First question goes to Michael Spencer. Hey, McKinley, it's Michael Spencer with CBS in Denver. Um, 
can you just kind of take us through the day and, and when you found out about the events in Boulder and what was going through your mind and was it hard at all to focus on playing a basketball game where you were all worried about what was going on back home? Man, it, it's, that's so hard and, and I feel bad, you know, so terrible for the families, um, you know, who was affected by what happened in Boulder. And, um, you know, today, you know, people get so caught up and even us as players um, and playing this game. It, and it's a privilege to play this game, but we have to realize that, you know, life outside of basketball is real. And, you know, a lot of pe people lost family members today. And, um, you know, some coward went in shooting up King Supers. And, you know, that that sucks. And, you know, for, for me, you know, where, where I come from, you know, that, that happens often and I see it a lot. So I, I'm just hurt and devastated, you know, for those families who, ha who has to experience this. And, you know, it sucks. And, you know, it, it was on my mind a little bit. And, you know, I thought about, you know, my life and growing up and, you know, what I've been through and, and seeing these people and what they have to go through now, it sucks. And, you know, I, I'm so sorry. And I'm going to pray for their families, you know, because life is so much bigger than basketball. You know, basketball is just a game. And uh, people people lost their lives today. That, that sucks. And, you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, kind of put that in words right now. Um, you know, coming off of, you know, playing my last game here at CU and that tragedy that went on down in Boulder, it, it's just terrible. Next question goes to Jake Shapiro. Hey, McKinley, uh, what was, uh, focusing on basketball on, on the floor today, what was Florida State doing that really got you guys? I mean, that was the, probably the worst turnover game you've had of the season. Just what was affecting you guys out there? Uh, I think they, they spelled us up, man. They they did a really good job of denying and pressuring us and, you know, talked to their staff after the game. And, you know, their their game plan was just to, to take me out of the game and um, keep two on me anytime we inbounded the ball, make somebody else bring it up, deny me the ball from getting into our actions. And um, we just we just didn't find a way to slow down tonight. And you know, they executed really well on the defensive end. Uh, especially in the second half. Next question goes to Justin Michael Guerrero. Ken, at some point tonight, when when you have some time to sit down, you pop your phone open. I can only assume the the thousands of of texts, of of tweets, of Instagram messages from from so many people that, that you have touched, just showing appreciation of you and what you've done for this program over the last couple of years. And I know this isn't the way that you guys wanted to go out. I know this stings, but. Is there any consolation you find out just knowing the, the mark you left on this program and the high bar that you and this senior class have set for uh, the underclassmen? Man, this hurts. You know, I'm, I, I'm, you know, trying to hold back my tears again right now. I, I gave this university everything I had for four years, man. You know, I, I tried my best to, to win as many games as possible. That's all I care about is winning. You know, I don't care about stats. Um, you know, my recruiting class, we didn't care about stats. We just wanted to come in and win. And we created that bond, uh, that love for each other. And, <clears throat> you know, they mean they mean a lot to me, man. You know, I'm so thankful for Colorado, um, you know, for welcoming me. You know, a small six-foot skinny point guard from Minneapolis. You know, they this this university changed my life. It changed my life, man. I, um, you know, to the point where I wasn't going home you know, just to avoid any trouble, uh, trying to stay away from my neighborhood and uh, avoid any type of conflict. You know, my teammates, um, they were real brothers to me, man. They made me comfortable to the point where I didn't have to go back to Minneapolis. I could just stay here and focus on my craft. And, you know, it, it hurts, man, it hurts. Um, and not necessarily the, the loss we took tonight, just the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm done. I just played my last game here at CU. Um, you know, I'll never get to play with this group of guys again, you know, especially my recruiting class. You know, we created so many memories over my four years here. And I'm just, I'm sorry, man. I, I gave, you know, Colorado everything I had in me. And it, it hurts to go out like this, you know, my four years here. You know, I haven't played one, one year healthy here at CU. You know, I've been hurt freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year, a different injury, you know. Some injuries we didn't even talk about, you know, this throughout these last two months, I took a shot 
and my I, I had a sprained AC joint, and I took a shot um, before the game and at halftime every game. And I asked coach not to tell the media just because I didn't want people to know. But um, you know, I, I've I've gave this university everything, so I'm just so thankful for Coach Boyle and the coaching staff for coming to get me and recruiting me. And it hurts to go out like this, man, but I gave it all I had. Next question goes to Kevin McCaskill, Jr. Kevin McCaskill, Jr., FP Sports, uh, Springfield, Mass. Uh, your coach just said before you came on that he was about to cry uh, talking about you. Uh, what has Coach Boyle meant to you in, in your life? Man, Coach Boyle meant so much to me. And just – not even on the basketball court, man. He, I, I've been in his office, just me, him, and our coaching staff, and we, we've talked about um, some of the struggles I've been through. Um, you know, some of the, the tribulations, trials, and tribulations I, me and my family has been through. You know, it's it's been a long run, man. And Coach Boy, he cares about everybody on the team outside of basketball. He he wants the best for us, and he wants us to succeed in life. He's meant a lot for me, man. He always preaches to me to get my degree um, because one day the ball's going to stop bouncing and to create relationships with, with people, um, with, with big-time people and because um, there's going to be jobs for me when I'm, done, when I'm done playing ball. You know, he, 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 he talks to my family a lot. He and my grandma text after every game, and I, I just found this out about two weeks ago that they text after every game, so – he he truly cares about me and my family, man. He he's meant so much to me more than it's it, more than I can put in words, man. He's he's done a lot for me, and so I'm I'm just so thankful for him and um, looking forward to you know watching uh, him lead the young class, and I'm proud of that class. And he just meant a lot to me, man. It's my guy. Next question goes to Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera. McKinley, uh, wondering if that AC joint is the same one you had surgery on, but then also, you know, kind of along the lines of your career, um, just what what are you most proud of? Uh, yeah, um, it was the same shot I had my labrum surgery on. Um, surgery on. Um, so I had to uh, – we, we got x-rays on it and everything. Um, doctor said it wasn't my labrum again. It was just the AC joint in there, and it was swole. Um, after every game, you know, like I said before, I took a shot before every game, about 20 minutes before, and at halftime, you know, I was late every halftime coming in to uh, coaches talk at half, and I was getting another shot to play through, um, to numb it up so I could be able to play. Um, and the thing I'm most proud of, man, is, is you know, every win we got, building relationships with my brothers. Um, you know, I can care less. Like I always, I keep saying this, and I just, I don't, I don't care about individual stats, man. I, I build relationship, I build lifelong relationships with these dudes, and um, you know, some people after college they stop talking to their teammates, and you know, I know for a fact. You know, we just talked about it in the locker room. You know, I want to be in all the group chats next year, um, Snapchat, Instagram, text message, Twitter. You know, I want to be in all our group chats still. Um, and I love every single one of these guys, one through 18. We built some lifelong relationships. So that's what I'm proud of, man, uh, building relationships. Uh, you know, I've, I've made some of my best friends here at Colorado. Next question goes to Pete Thamel. McKinley, uh, you had mentioned King Supers as a place that it sounded like you were familiar with it. Um, and it seems to be, according to the maps, near the near the Boulder campus. Is that a, is that a place you, you, you go to and know and are familiar with? And uh, I, I just want to kind of contextualize this for, you know, this awful, awful tragedy happening. And it, it seems like it's it's a place you, you know. Yeah, um, it's right on campus, man. It's, it's literally on campus. Um, you know, we get gold cars and uh, get money to go do some grocery shopping throughout the week. And, you know, that's one of the spots that's on our gold card list is King Super. So I'm very familiar with it, man. It's a, a common grocery store. A lot of people go to it. Um, it's probably five minutes from my house from where I live. So if that, probably less than the five, yeah, it's less than the five-minute drive from my house. So um, I know exactly where it is. 
um, it's it's just so sad and devastating um, that that happened. And you know, I, I'm sorry, and just want to send a prayer out to all the families who was affected by this. Next question goes to uh, Jake Sapiro. Hey, McKinley, I, I talked to you at like an outdoor event, I think after your sophomore year, um, you, you were just hanging out with the boys. Uh, and you said to me that your ultimate goal was to get to a sweet 16. Um, I, I, know, I know you're devastated. I know you well enough to know you're devastated right now. But to, to get to the program to the point where it feels like next year and, and there's positivity ahead, how proud does that make you that you feel like that's a realistic goal even without you? Man, it, it's so realistic. And I know a lot of people praise me and everything I've done for CU, but uh, it's not possible without my teammates, man. And I, and I, I, be, I get offended by that. And it, I, it frustrates me that so many people try to give me all the credit for the numbers that I've put up here. But none of that's possible without my teammates. They put me in position to be successful every day. Um, you know, when I'm when I'm doubting myself and I'm frustrated with myself, they they bring me up, and th those are some of the things that go unnoticed. So that that frustrates me um, a lot, and I'm I'm just so thankful for them to for being by my side and putting me in position to to do some of the things I've done here. And you know, that younger class, they're so talented. Like I I know for a fact they'll get to the Sweet 16 for me and for this senior class. Um, you know, the guys that, that are coming in and the guys that are here now, Dominique Clifford, Jabari, Tristan, Keyshawn, like um, Luke, like you guys don't get to see them play in real games, but I see them every day in practice. And, you know, I always say that my class was the most talented, but this class is special, dog. They're, they're going to be really good, so. Um, I'm excited for them. You know, I'm gonna watch every game that I can next year. Um, you know, they know I'll be there supporting them uh, day in and day out. So I'm excited for them. Thank you for your time tonight, McKinley. Yes, sir. That concludes tonight's press conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at NCAA.com/slash transcript.